Okay, so there's been a couple of questions in the Facebook uh, community group for Elementor um, on how to show uh, items on Hover. Um, so I thought I'd make this quick tutorial and just show the concepts. Um, so I've got three examples I've made. Um, now, it doesn't look pretty, but it's just to show the concepts. So the first one I've got here, this here is just a typical text editor. And if I roll over the first word lorem, uh, I get an image displayed next to it, which is actually inline in this HTML. Um, and all we've done is added some CSS and added a span with some uh, uh, with a class on it, and that uh, and we can use that anywhere we like throughout this HTML in the uh, text editor widget. Uh, this could also be a link uh, if you want it to link somewhere. Um, it's entirely up to you how you use it. So the second one is exactly the same thing, but instead of showing an image, I'm just showing a heading, so an H2 I think it is, and putting a background on it. So these two here are pure CSS within a HTML text editor widget. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, now this next one down here requires JavaScript, and it's because we've got disconnected items that we want to control. If I mouse over the hover, hover me, I see my image fades in on the right, mouse out, and it fades out. So this one requires both JavaScript and CSS. So I'm going to head over to my uh, page here where I've created this. And if we have a look at the first example here and look at the HTML for that, so it's basically a text editor widget. All I've done is added a span with a class show on text hover around this entire section here. So that's some additional text. So this uh, Ipsum, Delore, whatever, all of that there is from there on. So that's from this point onwards. So this span is really just encompassing that word lorem and an image. By adding this class, what it's doing is whenever you hover over anything of that, so even if I hover over that, it's even the image, if I'm hovering over the image, it stays there, roll out, and it's gone. Okay, so the image and the text I want to trigger this, uh, this hover effect on are all within that span, and it's a simple text and an image. If I wanted that to be a link, I could just do a... We have to learn to type and and now it's a link href yep now it's a link so you can see it's changed to a link and I've got a pointer on it and that could be a URL a ID to the link somewhere on the page it's now a link and it does exactly the same thing so it's entirely up to you how you do this and what you use it for as long as you've got a span and within that span, you can have something you're going to hover on, and then you've got an image that you want to show. All right, so the second one here, if I click on that second HTML there, have a look in here, it's exactly the same span, except for the bit I want to show is uh, this here. And because it's not an image, uh, I can easily detect an image. It could be anything. It could be an H1, H2, H3, another span, whatever it is. I've added a class to this, which is show text on hover target. So the target, when you hover that, will be this H2, uh, so that we can put anything we like there. So if I hover there, we've got the show me on hover. So that's pretty much how all the, all the markup that we need. I'm going to look at the actual... CSS for this. So we're just looking at this uh, up the top here. So what we're doing is we're saying the show text on hover, we want to set that span that we wrapped out to as a relative position. And that's so that when we show our target, the target is, we can say it's 100% from the left and it's to the bottom. So it's going to line up to the right hand side of that and the bottom. Uh, in this case, I've made it 200 pixels. You can change that if you want to. Um, 
Now, you can actually set that on the actual uh, image, if you like. Um, I've just done this for this demo. I just hit 200. Now, I've set the visibility hidden and the opacity to zero. We could have just gone display none. But what I found is when you just do display none, and then you add the class or add the hover effect to add the image, the transitions don't work. It just goes straight from opacity zero through to opacity one without any transition. So setting the visibility to hidden, uh, it works. So if I'm scrolling around here, there's nothing that I'm uh, moving my mouse around. There's nothing I'm rolling over. Once I roll over it, then it's visible. So the visibility hidden works. Uh, display none through to display inline block just doesn't work for this kind of thing. So visibility to hidden, capacity zero. Uh, we set this max width to unset, and that's because some elemental code, when you've got that uh, positioned um, absolutely, uh, it for whatever reason, it sets a max width on it uh, to 100%. So it'd be 100% of this span width here, which just makes it really tiny. So we just unset the max width. This is specifically to do with the image. Now we have a class where the show on text hover. So the entire span, when we hover it, we want to take the text hover target and set the opacity to one, visibility to visible, and we want to transition the opacity over uh, one second. So that's the one second and disappears when we move it out. So that's pretty much all there is to that. So this small amount of CSS, um, wrapping the uh, the both the text or whatever you want uh, in a class and a span with a uh, sorry in a span with a class show on text hover, uh, and then adding a item where you've got a class show on text hover target that could be an image h1 h2 whatever you want to. That's all that we need for this to work. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Straightforward, as far as I can see. Now the next one here takes a little bit more explaining. So what we do with this one is I'm going to go back to the HTML. We need some, first of all, we need uh, some additional CSS. So on we're going to call that get a target. We're going to say the show on uh, hover target, set the opacity zero, transition of opacity one second. Uh, and when it has the class show on it, we want to set the opacity to one uh, and we want to transition that over one second. So how that works is I'm going to just comment that out so you can see what I've actually got there. So you can see here I've basically got a two columns. I've got a heading widget here. And I've given that a class of hover to show. Okay, uh, I've got a image widget over here, and I've given that a ID of test hover target, which we'll talk about soon. And we've got a show on hover target. So this show on hover target class we put there so that when you don't want it visible, uh, it is hidden. So we'll bring that back, and that hides it by adding that there. Now going back to the uh, so the test hover target, we want to actually, when we roll over this, we want to access that target and add the show class to it. So come back to hover me. So hover to show is our class that we need to add that on anything we want to actually hover to show. The only other thing we need to add in here is in the attributes. We have to set a data target attribute and a pipe character with our test hover target in this case which is that ID I gave to the image. So this ID that you give to whatever widget you want to show. It doesn't have to be an image, it could be anything you like. Uh, you just give it an ID, set the data target for that ID, uh, and then that will work. So back to here, the JavaScript. So what we're doing here is we're saying, uh, we've got a typical JavaScript um, set up here, which I use, which is a semicolon to uh, help with minification if, uh, so it doesn't break if uh, the last thing that was loaded didn't have the semicolon. We then have these brackets here, which create a closure, uh, which give us an internal scope. So we don't have to worry about name clashes with these uh, variables 
or um, uh, any constants or class names or uh, function names. We don't have to worry about name clashes with other things because we're inside this scope here, which is the idea of doing that. Okay, we also pass the window object in. This is W. Um, that just makes it easier. So the W here is window. So we need to wait for the DOM content to load. So we had an event listener. And once that loaded, we can actually assign jQuery to dollar. We get all our triggers. So all of these, maybe we put the class on them as hover to show. So it's going to find all of those that have got a hover to show uh, class. And this, I love the jQuery way of doing this. There's a lot of advocates out there for pure JS. Um, I just think the, uh, I know it's syntactic sugar, but I think the syntax of doing some of these things is a hell of a lot easier in jQuery and a lot more concise and easier to read. Um, so in jQuery, we've got a collection of every one of these that has that class hover to show. Uh, and to apply their hover method to every single one of them, we just do dot hover. And that's going to iterate through every single one that it finds and apply all of this. So it's a really, really easy way to do it. It's a lot more, I guess, a lot more code, a lot more difficult to read uh, with PureJS. So that's why I like jQuery. So sorry about that for you purists out there, but that's my preferred method. So we're going to use ES6 syntax. So I'm using what they call an arrow function. So I'm passing in the event. So hover. Uh, has two functions. So the first function here before the comma is what happens when you hover, uh, the or your mouse over, I should say. The second function is what happens when you mouse out. So it's really simple. So mouse over, mouse out. So we're using ES6 destructors here. So we're saying the current target, get the current target from E. So this is the equivalent to saying constant uh, current target. equals e dot current target. That's pretty much the same as doing that. That's the old way of doing it. In fact, you wouldn't use that because that's not the old way. You'd use a var uh, in uh, ES5 or ES2005. So the old way would be var current target equals e dot current target. ES6 way is constant, curly brackets, current target equals e. That pulls the current target out of that and assigns it to that constant. So then we want to do the same, we want to get the actual um, data. So on these, I'm just going to come back to there. Remember why in here we've got the attributes, we set the uh, data target equals, or not equals, sorry, pipe, and then the ID of the target. So what this does is it gets the uh, current targets data set. We could do a jQuery way of doing this. This is actually quicker than that. So sometimes pure JavaScript is actually quicker than the jQuery way. Uh, so we can take the data, take, take the target from the current target's data set, which will be that attribute that we set. Then what we do is we want to get a jQuery reference to that target. So this image over here. So we do a dollar and we get the hash, which means it's an ID plus whatever the target was set in the data set. And then we'll use the jQuery method to add the class show, which is what makes it show. Okay, so once it's got the show method, this CSS is called, which sets the opacity one over one second. Okay, now when you mouse out, we're doing the same thing as what we did above, but we're going target, remove class show. So now it's going to return to this CSS, which sets the opacity to zero over one second. So that's pretty much how that JavaScript works. So what we'll see here is as we hover over, we get a one second transition in, one second transition out. We look at the uh, console here and we look at the image. I'm going to go to the, there, that's the widget, the image. We have a look at the class list here. We don't have a show on it. We hover over. And we should see a show somewhere here. Uh, move something on there. There we go. So the Chrome DevTools, if, you're, if you've double clicked in here, it doesn't show the updates. So just watch. I'll zoom in on that. Zoom in in the console. 
So watch the image, this image here. So watch these classes here as I scroll over the hover me. It's added the show at the end, and then it's removed the show. So that's what the jQuery, uh, not the jQuery, sorry, the uh, JavaScript here is doing. So when you hover over it, add show. When you hover away from it, or move away from it, remove show. Pretty straightforward. Um, it's a bit of learning if you don't understand uh, much of JavaScript yet, but it's not too bad. And, and the cool thing here is that that hover target could be anything. It doesn't have to be an image. It could be a accordion. It could be a chart. It could be uh, anything you like, a, a set of tabs. Uh, and you just wanted to show when you hover over a particular section. Now, by the way, this doesn't work in the back end because of the way uh, it runs the JavaScript code. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for me. So I hope that's helpful.